Oh, baby. Oh, All baby. right, guys. Mikhail coming in with Crypto Grady. Cri Grady, you are one of the most energetic, optimistic guys that I know. And I think right now where we are with the current market conditions, it's exactly what we need. So I appreciate you taking the time to hop on and just chop it up. Mikhail, you are one of my favorite human beings on the planet of Earth. I love you, man. Love what you do. I love your vibe. There's a lot of potential with you. You keep it up. You keep doing what you're doing. There's no telling where this can go. I'm a believer in Mikhail, baby. Let's go. I appreciate on that. I appreciate that. Grady, I'm, let's jump right in. All, All right. right. So I know that you are big on gaming. There are certain games that you've been playing on your channel, which if you want to give us a quick plug, what that is. Yeah, you know, interesting. I was I was really just more of a crypto guy, crypto believer that turned into a big time DeFi guy, you know, and, and I noticed my kids, I've got five kids, you know, that I know of and um, pretty sure it's just five, I promise. <laughs> okay. And <clears throat> So, and they're playing all these games all the time. I'm like, guys, you know, you can be, you can be playing all these play to earn games out there. So I was trying to get them into it. And in the process, it got me in to the games to help try and get them into the games. Okay. And, and I had made some crazy games, you know, from Axie Infinity and a lot of different games out there back in the, there was like a little gaming bull run that happened, um, out there, you know, a few, couple, few years ago and killed it and was trying to get my kids into it well and then i was really into like fate and arena you know some of those games and i got my kids into it some but keeping their interest is a whole nother thing but what in my main thing is that i've always wanted to find that next phenomenal thousand x gain in crypto and the way my thought process worked with it is hey i want to find those teams with strong core fundamental, you know, values, core values of the golden rule, not looking at the five minutes in front of their face, trying to make a quick buck, not money driven. Uh, uh. They're out there. They've got a vision and a passion and a why that's driving them. They're trying to find, you know, you know, they're trying to solve a problem or fix something or have some amazing new technology or new innovation to make, you know, crypto, I, I believe will become kind of like the internet is today kind of like cell phones are today, you know, versus 20 years ago, you know, it's been quite a change in a short time. And that's what I see crypto changing finance as we know it in all facets of our lives in so many ways in blockchain. Okay. And so wanting to find what's the next phenomenal project out there, the phenomenal team that's grinding, you know, and they're with the thousand X game, of course, looking for that, but also you know, for the tech itself and, you know, get in on that. So we all wish we were in Bitcoin when it was at a penny, when Bitcoin was at a dollar, we wish we're in there. Well, what's another one that's going to be coming up and be a winner long term. Okay. And so I've always been on this hunt to find these awesome projects and these awesome teams. And, you know, I was really getting familiarized with gaming being, okay, this is going to be a sector where crypto becomes real world utility real world mainstream that's like simple and a no brainer. Okay. Versus like people playing call of duty, they put in hundreds, thousands of dollars, you know, and then they don't own that. They don't own the NFT. They don't own any of it. They don't control any of it. Okay. And it's like, okay, crypto gaming is going to be one of the front runners here to overtake, you know, our traditional system out there. And, and so <clears throat> That, that's an obvious one to me. Well, and, and so this is kind of how this evolved. I find this team, DeFi Kingdoms. And I'm like, huh, you know, after years of being on crypto, this team is out here doing weekly AMAs and they're really transparent and they seem to have the strong core values. And you dig deeper into the team, they're big brains. They're, they're sharp now. Now here's what almost all crypto projects, they can't get out of their own way when it comes to messaging, communication, marketing, like PR, they can't, it's like, they don't get it. And it's a disaster. Okay. <laughs> Except like Cardano. I can't, there's hardly, you know, I guess Vitalik Buterin is, is all right with Ethereum. He doesn't get in his own way at least. And so, 
Um, you know, but besides that, I can't hardly think of a project that can even help themselves from getting in their own way and just shooting themselves in the foot when it comes to messaging, marketing, and how to juggle that properly. Uh, and so I noticed that even though DeFi Kingdoms does their weekly AMA, so they're better than most right off the bat when it comes to that, but still couldn't get out of their own way when all this FUD came against them in May or late April of 2022. And all these people were accusing Frisky Fox, you know, of being a rug, rug pull and this, that, and the other. And it was, and I just knew, no, it's false. And the team did not get in front of them. And it went all the way up to George. So then George just reported on the news. He was saying, doesn't look like DeFi Kingdoms is going to survive. I think, you know, they're saying Frisky Fox is a rug. George said all that. And he said it multiple times. He's like, I'm getting out of DeFi Kingdoms. And that just further, it was like a 99% exodus out of the ecosystem. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to, you know, this is like the best project I've ever seen in crypto when it comes to sort of my, what I'm looking for as far as big potential. They're doing breakthrough things. You know, they, they, they've done things such as you can now combine two NFTs, okay, bridge them cross-chain in one transactions and separate the two NFTs. You can add the pet to the hero. Now, you can add equipment to the hero, things like that. Never been done in crypto. You know, for example, they're just doing several things like that that we haven't really seen before. And Big Vision, all kinds of potential. They've got Wisdom Gaming out there partnered with them. So it's actually like a part of the team, part of their team and part of Wisdom's team. They're developing out the PVP, PVE, crafting system, traveling systems, you know, so much going. And Big Vision, they've had a lot of that. The, the Harmony Bridge hack almost killed them, but they didn't die. They keep grinding. And so that's kind of what I look for in crypto is, you know, and, and I like to methodically deep dive into projects. Uh, and so it doesn't have to be, but it, it kind of turned into where I'm, I guess I'm a gaming guy. <laughs> You know, and that I am, but it's really, I mean, my roots, a lot of my roots are DeFi as well. So, you know, there's so many good projects out there that I still don't know very much about that I want to learn and support the good guys out there like Mikhail himself, our man. I love it. I appreciate that. Yeah. A lot to unpack there. So you, yeah. you mentioned that uh, DeFi Kingdoms, you're obviously very passionate about the project. You stuck with them through thick and thin. Why yeah. isn't what they're building, why isn't that easily replicated? Well, right now through the bear, all we've seen is most projects have to close their doors. They run out of money. Now, I, but there's been a lot of, lot, lot, lot of copycats, DeFi Kingdoms copycats. And similar thing, like there's there's one recently that I was also into a little bit called Mind Games, and that one just shut its doors because they the token, you know, was the token they needed. They needed the value of the token to hold up, you know, because that was how they were the team was getting funded. So they're relying on their token, trying to trying to bring demand for the token, okay, while at the same time being in a spot where they're forced to sell the token that, that that's allotted to the team, okay, to fund the team. Well, the token just kept crashing, crash, 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 till they ran out. You know, it was like the devs went from getting paid like $1,000 a week to like $15 a week. <laughs> and then eventually they just like, they had no treasury and closed the door and it was like, what the heck? Um, so it's hard. You got to be super innovative to stay ahead of how can this sustain itself? How can the tokenomics sustain? How can the team and the treasury sustain itself to where they can continue to develop and innovate? And that's like, you you know, the details there is very difficult, fine-tuned, and you have to do it right. And most of the time it's not right. That's one, and that's another reason why with DeFi Kingdoms, they've got this guy, Hubert Cumberdale, baby. and Big brains when it comes and Dreamer, who was executive at Goldman Sachs, you know, before being with the team, just so many dream team type guys in there developing in the devs. And so it's hard. And even then, it's still a risk. You know, they've almost died 
that project almost died multiple times after the Harmony Bridge hack, you know, because they were on the Harmony blockchain. And it's amazing that they've even survived this long. But now we're seeing all these partnerships they're making big time. We're anticipating, we're hoping, we're praying they're going to be on the next Crypto Gym TV show, which is one of my most bullish projects as well. The Hourglass Weight community is phenomenal. The Weight Token. Um, and I'm, I love Jet with the next Crypto Gym. Everything going on there, man. I'm so pumped for that. Everything. Gosh, dang. So how can it, I mean, there's a lot of people trying to duplicate it, but it's what they're doing has never been done before. They're blazing trails in the crypto space that we haven't seen. And you can, you can try and duplicate that to an extent, but you can't, it takes a lot to wrap your mind around that entire ecosystem and everything they're doing. And I haven't seen anybody able to duplicate that yet but it's it's possible i suppose well you i'm curious to know from you because you play a lot of games and there's other factors that you look at mm -hmm. how much of your judgment of a game is the actual gameplay experience versus what's happening on paper right like the tokenomics the price like all those other factors that go into crypto like what would you, you know, say for, that's the Great question for George's channel, um, Cryptos R Us Plus that we're both doing, we're both excited for. All right, we're going to be doing the gaming section of the channel, and we're going to be pitting two games against each other that are similar every week. Or that's the goal. It's it's a lot of work. We'll see. Hopefully, we can do one a week. We'll see on that. Maybe two or three a month might be more realistic, and we might try and do like a gaming news section or something. We'll see on that. But so the first thing we look at is number one, tokenomics, token utility and upside. Number two, NFT cost and entry to enter the game and NFT utility and supply versus value, you know, the potential upside for the NFTs. Number three, we look at, okay, this team's social score, this well, they're uh, most all teams are probably going to get low, low grades on this marketing, messaging, communication, i.e. their social score. That's number three. Number four. The team's partnerships, finances, treasury, and backing, and sustainability, essentially. Is this thing sustainable? Okay. Number five is the gameplay, and number five is the most important part, the gameplay. But we know there's a lot of people out there that aren't necessarily interested in getting in there and playing the game, being a pro at the game, or whatever it is. Like, I, you know, it's really, I do it some. You know, I, I definitely... Have my plate full. I could, I mean, with Dragons Crossing, for example, okay, they they have a seasonal play, and I love that game. So I'm a huge Dragons Crossing bull, and nobody knows about it. It's like a little gem tucked away in crypto. Phenomenal team, huge big brains. The game came out day one, fully playable, ready to go on day one. There's no token, so don't got to worry about you know the team needing to rely on the token for the you know, pumping up <laughs> things. Um, and so, and it's a sustainable model long-term, as long as there's people playing. If there's not people playing, it's not sustainable. But, and it's so big brains. And it's it's one of the most addictive, if not the most addictive Web3 game out there currently at the moment is Dragon's Crossing. You enter into seasonal play and I played that game, okay? Because I've got 40, 43 heroes now. I played that game for 55 hours straight, I stayed up two nights in a row and a full day in between. And, and between those two, you know, I was I was playing. It was like this five day period that was nuts. And I went two straight nights without sleeping playing this game straight. Has it, have you ever heard of that? I was wondering. Hey, I need to I need to flex about this a little more. What game has caused somebody to do that that anybody can think of? Well, Dragons Crossing did, and I ended up being the most profitable of season two and i should have been a lot even a lot more profitable <laughs> that's a different story um in the game and so and it's just fun get my kids into it and stuff so <clears throat> that is the most important thing is the gameplay itself but all these other things are super important for a project could a project could a gaming project survive if it was horrible to horrible tokenomics Horrible NFT cost and value, you know, but, and 
a bad team when it comes to messaging, marketing, communication, their social score. And, you know, if they had no partnerships and not, a you know, not a whole lot of treasury and backing, if just based off the fun gameplay alone, could that sustain itself? The answer is yes, it could. And it could be still go big and be big, but it's unlikely. So all these things, all these five criteria are super important. Don't have to have them all. Okay. But the most important one out of the five, obviously, I would say for games is the gameplay itself. And so, you know, that's why we're bringing on the gurus of games. If I'm not a guru of the game, I'm bringing somebody on who is. And then I'm a slow, methodical guy. So I won't become a guru overnight of a game either. You know, I like to do a, more of a methodical deep dive into things. And I'm always trying to learn and grow. But that's kind of, you know, what we're looking for. And, and most of these games, you know, I'm just not going to have time to play them. But I'm still interested in maybe, you know, owning an NFT if it's worth owning. If it has the potential upside to, to raise in value and or the token. You know, if it's got like Axie Infinity got in there, 50 cents. Started selling at $79 <laughs> per token, then started, you know, sold some more to 100 and 120 and then sold all the way out of Axie Infinity when it was right at $165, believe it or not. And never this actually brings up a really good, good point, Grady. So you, you know, you, you obviously play these games because you love the gameplay, but there is a certain investment element to this, right? The, right. You want to see the token, you know, like you say, 10x, 100x, whatever the case may be. Do you think that that type of mentality, do you think it hinders our ability to change the narrative for Web3 gaming and its focus being around the actual gaming experience? No, I, I would say, if anything, it just broadens the horizon, you know, broadens the potential. Just imagine if like, I've never played Clash of Clans or Call of Duty you know, with all these big games. Okay. But imagine if there is upside, you know, what I could buy their stock maybe, right? If it's a public company or something, can I buy the stock? Can I do that? Maybe. Call of Duty, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Call of Duty, I can go to the stock market and buy some Call of Duty shares. I don't, I don't know. I'm not a stock guy. Activision. Yeah. You, you, you can buy is. Activision, which is a company that, that makes Call of Duty. So I'm not playing the game, but I'm investing in the potential upside of the game. And so, and that just brings more exposure to the game. Like with DeFi Kingdoms, that did like, dude, that, that, that did something like a 10,000 X in a very, very short, like in a matter of months, like a couple few months. Okay. Back, uh, you know, it's about two years ago now they're coming up on their second birthday. DeFi Kingdoms is well, most of the people were coming in there for the DeFi aspect of it because that is a robust ecosystem. It's a first and foremost, it's a DeFi platform. And they're a blockchain and they can support other games too coming on. So other developers, third-party developers like crazy are, de they're developing games right now as we speak on DeFi Kingdoms, the DFK chain and Avalanche subnet. Okay. So they, they do so much. And that subnet, by the way, is doing something like 3 million transactions per day <laughs> and just, you know, doing awesome. And, and it's a fraction of a penny each transaction. And it's like doing well. That's like a good sign for Avalanche and this, the subnet um, is phenomenal. So, you know, I would say just that's how I've, I wasn't playing DeFi. King. I wasn't owning heroes. I wasn't summoning, you know, heroes. When I first came in, I was just in the creating liquidity. I was a DeFi guy. That's how, but then, you know, I started diving a little deeper into the ecosystem. I'm like, oh man, I need to buy up a couple of heroes. And then now I own over 2000 heroes and, 19 gen zeros, you know, in that ecosystem. And so I, I would say it just brings more exposure. Then you're going to have, so then you're going to have, you can treat DeFi kingdoms as DeFi, even if you're not playing the game, you can buy up an army of heroes. You can get with a botting service like DFK helper. There's third party, third party botting services that, you know, are awesome. And the DFK helper is kind of becoming the main one. Zellies is out there. He's doxxed. We know where he lives. And he is just front and center. He's like one of the biggest DeFi Kinos bulls. He'll be on, he's on everybody's stream. You know, so he's got an automation, full-blown automation service 
that you can farm the items, in-game items, with your heroes, and then you can just sell them. You can dump them. And, you know, it at times, depend, it's like changes fast. The in-game economy changes fast, okay? Because this the, the ecosystem is evolving so fast. Like every other week, we get a new um, update in the game of the developers. You know, they're developing stuff out so fast in there. And so once the game launches PvE, PvP, and crafting, there's going to be phenomenal, mind-blowing gains in the in-game items, too. Things like tiers. We've already seen this year, tiers have, they were up at one point, they had like 50 x the tiers, which are an item you almost need everything in the game for. Stamina potions and all the potions, the stones, you know, and so you're trying to get, you know, these awesome heroes for PvP. So you're going to have people just wanting to play PvP. They're just going to want to come in and buy the best heroes they can and compete because it's going to be eSport level game. Then you're going to have people farming for the items that those players need. Okay. And the players aren't going to be as concerned about the cost of things. They're just wanting to have fun, play the game and compete. You're going to have people farming for items. You're going to have people farming, you know, trying to make the best heroes, which is like a science <laughs> when summoning and, and dark summoning and trying to make these awesome PVP monsters. Okay, you've got, and then they 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 try and make the awesome PvP monster and then sell it. You know, you got people farming for items, and there's so many different things you can do in the ecosystem. There's guilds, there's gonna be land, you know, there's lands and the huge utility, there's crafting. Okay, there's gonna be people focusing on crafting items. There's all these different things, and there's just gonna be people providing liquidity, you know, for the DeFi protocols. And so there's a huge range of things you can do in that ecosystem without necessarily having to play the game. And so, and I think that's going to be the case with a lot of Web3 gaming. You know, there, there is going to be those Web3 games like Dragon's Crossing, where it's just simple. It's a game. You get in there and play. It's not eSport level, but it's super fun and addictive, you know, and there's nothing else to it. You go compete. It's a seasonal play. There's a leaderboard and you try to win the season. You know, make money. Doing it, or there's winners and losers. Yes, that's simple. Um, and and it's kind of like a DraftKings style. There's a rake. That's how the team makes money. That's how it sustains. Um, and you hope to find NFTs too that are super rare. But you find those NFT spell books or, or summoning shards. You can sell them. You can summon new heroes. Not very many. There's hardly any. But and that's kind of simple. And there's other games like that too. But I think a lot of the games that I see coming out, there's going to be competitive players and then there's going to be people that might want to be involved in the ecosystem of the game to do other things besides just playing the game but still be involved in the game it was fun we'll have all so, so sounds like sounds like you think that the just web3 in general we're yeah. going to have almost like different tentacles you have one that is specifically geared towards gameplay which to me personally, I think is the hardest one to accomplish. It's the one that requires the most money because you're competing against all the Fortnites and the Call of Duties of the world. Yeah. And then you have these other games that are more of gamifying DeFi, mm -hmm. right? Where it's not necessarily about the graphics, but more about just yep. creating a fun way to make money, essentially. So we're yeah. almost finding like a divergence. Yeah, and ma making that, sustainable there's not too many things out there that can sustain what the last thing you just said gamifying DeFi to make money how is that sustained there's winners and losers you know it'll be a zero-sum game in the end most likely in those scenarios but where DeFi kings comes in is that for the on the DeFi side and on all these there's you know if if they create demand for the earning token the power token you got to have to play the game of DeFi kingdoms well, and that's also the token you earn in the decks. That's the earning token for the yield farmers out there. Okay. And that power token is also being burned as it's used in the game. If you hatch eggs, if you summon heroes, um, which there's a lot of that happens like to the tune of millions of tokens. Like, I don't know how many per month are used for summoning and hatching eggs and dueling. There's duels. There's different things in the game. Those are being burned at high rates too. So it, have, this is where DeFi has problems of sustaining itself because 
the earning token that you're getting from the yield farming, it, where's the demand? You got to have heavy buy pressure to make it sustainable. Otherwise, they all die. All the DeFi platforms die. Well, with gaming, when you're earning the power token that has high demand, that's the only way it can really sustain. And, and I know there's innovative stuff happening, though, like Pancake Swap. They're trying to, you know, always trying to find more utility for the cake token, for example. But I haven't seen, like, how sustainable is that going to be really? Maybe, you know, they figured out. Um, and if it's really bullish, you know, there has to be demand for that earning token. And so that's where gaming paired with DeFi is brilliant. But the other, you know, when you say you're worried about Roblox and that's the competition is Roblox and Call of Duty and um, whatever, all these big games. Well, to me, it's like low hanging fruit. People are going to realize I'm not making any money. I can do the same thing and make money doing it potentially, <laughs> right? It's like a no brainer. It's like, it's going to happen. I believe the like web three gaming will overtake gaming as we know it. Will it happen in two or three years? I don't know. Will it happen in 10 years? Maybe. Will it happen? Yeah, the, the, the future the, the future is definitely bright. I think we're a little far further away from it competing, but I think we can compete on other levels, right? Maybe right. not necessarily from a graphics or storyline, mm -hmm. but I think there are some other areas where we can uh, uh, attack. It's, it's almost like a battle, right? Right. <laughs> it's almost like a battle, and I think that there are some areas where we could absolutely win. And I also say that all the things that you mentioned that, you know, make DeFi kingdoms and some of these games really successful, uh, I think having a conversation doesn't really quite do it justice. I think people need to actually watch you play it and they need to go check out your channel. So if, why don't you uh, give us some parting thoughts about your channel and all the things that you're working on so that way yeah. we can, uh, you know, have, have people get more educated about everything. Yeah, baby. so I'm so inundated into the DeFi Kingdoms ecosystem and Dragon's Crossing ecosystems, which Dragon's Crossing, they were DeFi Kingdoms OGs, you know, so it's like those two ecosystems are pretty close knit. So I do a lot of coverage on that, but I'm not trying to just be, I'm wanting to be, you know, I, I had Scott with Wagney Games on, I'm excited about that. You know, I'm other projects out there, you know, I'm trying to get, you know, have interesting content for anybody to watch at any time. And not be overly, occasionally still doing, you know, uh, just exclusive coverage, long videos even sometimes on DeFi Kingdoms or on Dragon's Crossing. But, you know, I want to get into a mode. Mr. George is trying to get it through my thick skull here. <laughs> it's like hard to do, but have a, you know, consistent daily short videos that aren't too long. You know, 30 minutes or less usually is the goal. <laughs> and uh, that where I still might cover the different games, but it won't, you know, anybody can watch even if you're not into gaming and, and still be interested at uh, possible speculative plays. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, we're here, we are here for the tech for sure. I mean, I'm a hundred percent here for the tech and I believe in it, but you know, we, we want to find those gems, those awesome games, you know, and not with meme coins. It's just, it's just weird to me, but with, Phenomenal projects and innovation and technology. We want to find that ahead of time and be front runners and get in there on those good projects and with good teams and good solid core values. So, you know, that's that's the, my main push of the channel is finding those good teams, those good projects, whether it's gaming or not. It's got a gaming focus for sure, my channel, but DeFi, gaming, crypto in general. We've got the guys from Rose CFI coming on next week. I'm really excited about that project. They're at DeFi. And you, you're welcome to come on and join. Do you want? You know, uh, yeah, I know Chris in, 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 in the game. Yeah, I actually introduced them to uh, George from Cryptos RS. That was you? So that what's interesting is they're all part of the network spotlight community. So it's funny how it all comes back full circle. Yeah, Ooh, absolutely. You want to come on the show? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, I, I would love to. Yeah, Wednesday yeah I, I would join. I think it's Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central is when we're I'll doing that. Sure. All right, you're in. I'll be there, Brady. I'd, well, I'd Brady, love listen, it things, I'd love to get all things ETH, too. Uh, the, what's his name? The DeFi guy. Yeah. Yeah. Justin, let's I think. It. Justin. Justin. I'm not mistaken. I yeah. apologize if I'm, I'm terrible with names. I am too. I should probably know his name, but yeah, really good <laughs> guy for sure. 
yeah Brady, it was a real pleasure you know getting your perspective i need to be educated more on on gaming and that's why i hang out with people like you and you're just an overall good dude so i appreciate everything that you do for the community uh definitely we'll make sure to uh link your youtube channel in the description and and I'm really excited to see what you're doing with uh, George and Crypto's RS Plus channel. Uh, thanks so much for coming on. It was a real pleasure. I love you, man. Take care. Love Peace you back. Out.